baby. These Baltimore Ravens just keep getting stronger and stronger. Against the Cleveland Browns the other day, Morgan Moses, he left the game with an injury. And a lot of Ravens fans were saying, oh, that looks like a pec injury. That's not good. And they had me a little shook, too. Because I was like, oh, no, I, I believe them. Because Ravens fans, unfortunately, know what a pec injury looks like. They dealt with it a couple of years ago when Marlon Humphrey against the Steelers. He left with a pec injury. That ended his season. And then earlier this year, Marcus Williams, we thought it might end his season. But... He's back, which is ins insanely crazy to me still. Uh, so I was like, oh, these Ravens fans, they pretty much doctors too with all the injuries that we done seen and have diagnosed and assessed and all of that. So when Morgan Moses missed Wednesday's practice, I was like, okay, well, yeah, I didn't expect him to practice on Wednesday. I didn't even expect him to play in this upcoming game against the Steelers. I don't expect him to practice all week. But then Thursday happened, and he ended up practicing. And I, I said, What? Morgan Moses actually practiced Now he was limited But he did still practice And that gives me just a bit of hope That he may end up playing in this game Against the Steelers uh, this coming Sunday Now we'll have to wait till later on today When we see the practice report for Friday Even though it's pretty much a walkthrough It's not a normal physical practice But we'll see But these Baltimore Ravens Having Morgan Moses back That will make them that much stronger Because he was not in my expectations to go against the Pittsburgh Steelers, I was thinking, all right, it's going to be either Daniel Falele uh, or if Ronnie Stanley somehow comes back, then it will be Patrick McCarry at right tackle for the Baltimore Ravens. And then there had been some talk uh, that they could possibly, they could use Ben Cleveland at a tackle spot if need be, if it came down to it. But I don't think that it will. But this is a beautiful thing because Morgan Moses was back at practice and that makes the Ravens that much better because he is a starter at right tackle. But then... There's more because this week on Wednesday and Thursday, somebody who practiced in full Wednesday and Thursday was Ronnie Stanley. And that would set him up really, not really, really nice for playing against the Steelers. But Jeff Rebick said that Ronnie Stanley said that there's a strong possibility that he plays on Sunday. Cause you know Ronnie Stanley, he calls his own shots. If Ronnie Stanley want to play, he'll play. If Ronnie Stanley don't want to play, he ain't going to play. Well, so if Ronnie Stanley's saying there's a strong possibility that he's going to play on Sunday, hey, we could use all the help that we could possibly get. Look, this offensive line ain't been, they've been, they've been having some good moments, but they had a lot of bad moments too. It's been rough. That's the perfect word that I would use to describe this offensive line this, thus far this season. It's been rough. But having Morgan Moses back at right tackle, having Ronnie Stanley back at left tackle, we got Tyler Linderbaum back last week at center. Uh, we still got John Simpson at left guard. We got Kevin Zeitler at right guard. Literally, this would be the first time since some of week one because we didn't even get them for the four week one because you remember Ronnie Stanley left and Tyler Linderbaum left too. But this will be the first time since week one if we do get Morgan Moses and Ronnie Stanley both back. This will be the first time since week one that we had our starting offensive line all together. First time since week one. You know how significant that is? And this is week five, and we know we done dealt with a lot of injuries, but that would be great. That would be amazing if the Baltimore Ravens can get their starting unit back together and keep their starting unit together, especially against these Pittsburgh Steelers. Like, you know, T.J. Watt, one of the best in the game. And even with a starting offensive line, I expect T.J. Watt to still get his. I hope that he doesn't, but I just know how great of a player he is. And then you got Alex Highsmith, too. Cam Hayward is out, which benefits the Ravens. Uh, obviously not celebrating his injury at all, so don't get it twisted. But him being out, it, that helps the Ravens because they got one less guy to deal with because we know Cam Hayward causes a lot of trouble, too. But Steelers, they, they find a way to bring it regardless, regardless of who they got out there. So Baltimore Ravens are going to have to be on their best behavior when it comes to these Pittsburgh Steelers and their best blocking up front. The, the, the big boys got to get nasty in this game. They, they really, really, really do because this is going to be a physical game and you're going to want to make Lamar's job easier. And, and you, we need Lamar Jackson to have one of those pretty games. One of those pretty games, but obviously a win is most important first and foremost. But against the Steelers, yeah, it's, it's been some ugly numbers when he has played. He hasn't played the Steelers too much, but when he has played, the numbers ain't been too pretty. But it's time to change all of that. This is where, this, this is a statement game, in my opinion, for Lamar Jackson and Pittsburgh, against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, another thing, Kenny Pickett uh, in practice on Thursday he was a full participant. So, again, it is looking like it's going to be the Kenny Pickett show against the Baltimore Ravens uh, this upcoming Sunday. Now, Patrick Queen, 
um, with his comments the other day about Mike Tomlin. Uh, I thought it was interesting that he said that, and I told y'all how I felt about it. I'm like, all right, well, with Patrick Queen saying that, I just felt like it gave the Pittsburgh Steelers some more ammo. Like, oh, Patrick Queen, he thinking about this thing that happened back in 2020. It's still on his mind. It's still bothering him. Oh, yeah, we're going to definitely run our mouths to him uh, this coming Sunday because it's going to mess with his head. And, again, football is a lot more mental than it is physical. Uh, but at the same time, I was thinking, all right, well, maybe with Patrick Queen, maybe he's just saying that because – he is over it, and maybe he's at the point to where the words don't affect him as much as they did before. Uh, but either way, I did not know it was going to pick up national headlines like that. And like that, that, that thing has been going crazy. I've I, I seen it being talked about a lot by a lot of different people. I said, okay, I, I did not expect that. But then at the same time, okay, yeah, adding fuel to the fire. So that, the, the media has made this thing a lot bigger than what I thought it was going to be. So I was a little bit surprised by that. But anyway, back to the subject at hand. The Baltimore Ravens got even more stronger in the secondary too because Jalen Armour Davis, who had been, who returned to practice a couple of days ago, but had been limited. Uh, he was a full participant. Jalen Armour Davis. So the Ravens secondary gets that much stronger. Now the secondary have been doing their thing already. And Jalen Armour Davis, even though he practiced in full, I, I don't really expect him to be on the field too much. But to have him in your reserve is a beautiful thing. To have him available is a beautiful thing because, again, the more the merrier. The more the merrier. The Baltimore Ravens need all the health that they can possibly get. And they're starting to finally get it. 